With the spirit of a pep rally, school colors and all, MFA staff and volunteers pose for a class photo on this landmark day. Happy 150th birthday. And what's a birthday without presents? There are 15 times throughout the year that you can sign up for a first year free membership. So on our community celebration days, when we know a lot of people come to the museum, for people who have an experience membership, it's a, a year free to try us out. Boston's Museum of Fine Arts is one of the largest art museums in the country, hailed for its distinguished collections. The founding mission, 150 years ago, was to open its doors to all the world, a mission that remains today. From the Grand Huntington facade to the Fenway entrance, long shuttered until a decade ago, the MFA welcomes more than one million visitors a year. 140 galleries showcase 500,000 works of art spanning centuries and cultures. It has the feel of a small city with places to dine, shop, learn, or just hang out. There are 770 employees and 1,250 volunteers, including Riley, the pest-sniffing canine. Among the mummies, masters, and modern works of art are thousands of stories waiting to be told. Stories are what the MFA is all about, says museum director Matthew Teitelbaum. It was one of the visions of our founders that we would create a teaching institution that helped communities understand the issues of their time through the lens of art. Our collection is really a testament to the commitment of this community to create a great museum that can tell those stories. And by any ranking, it's one of the great, great museums in North America. The challenge today, how to thrive in this fast-paced social media age. I believe that online experiences are authentic. Great art is produced for and on social media. I believe that. So then the question is, what do you do in a museum? You have to, I think, create a sense that you're in a space together, that you're sharing something together. You're never too old to try something new. In a first, the MFA hired teen interns to curate a show. Black History's Black Futures opened on MLK Day. The exhibition had always been planned. There was some intentionality to think about how we bring out a lot of our black artists from the collection and get them on display in a prominent way. Um, that was first. The museum partnered with local youth groups to recruit six high school students, Jaden Smith and Jennifer Rosa among them. Their jobs, choose the artwork, and write the wall texts. If we didn't tell you that teenagers had curated this exhibition, you would not know. We considered that a pilot, and now we're thinking about how to codify it into a permanent program. Recently, the museum found itself the target of criticism by some made to feel unwelcome. I think it's important to really explore the idea that somebody with no experience in this world, myself included, can walk into this museum and find a home here. We had to learn how to interpret art, look at art to find the underlying messages, picking out our themes, picking out our artwork, seeing what means the most to us. So I came up with the theme, Smile in the Dark, which basically like shows black people living unapologetic lives. And it was during a time where it was like hard to even like smile. All the artists in these collections are African-American or Latinx or part of the black diaspora. Most of these works were either already in the museum's collection or we borrowed them from uh, the African American Museum. You could say this was pretty much love at first sight if that works for paintings. This was made by Archibald Motley in the 1900s when he was transferring over from more portrait drawings to drawings of big groups of people. It spoke to me instantly, it just popped out to me. The name of my exhibition is Ubuntu, I am because you are, it's a Zulu term. But to me, it means that I am the person I am today, and I get to enjoy any possibilities I have today because of what those who before me went through, the trials and tribulations they went through. This couple was actually featured on a Time magazine. The artist, Richard Yard, 40 years later, he ended up painting it on watercolor with this new background. The magazine was only in black and white. A lot of kids my age don't have this experience. I see the MFA now as the second home, not something that I have to be afraid to walk through, just to know that I'm welcome here, and that I am a part of the art world now. 
<laughs> and both Jaden and uh, Jaden and Jennifer are students at John D. O'Brien School of Math and Science. And as you can imagine, this internship exposed them to a whole new world. Yeah, Jaden plays football. He's also a percussionist, but he says he's thinking now about minoring in art history. As for Jennifer, she uh, was inspired to paint after her time there and also was quite surprised to find out how many different jobs there are actually at the Museum of Fine Arts. What a great program. Mm -hmm. All right, next, can you name five women artists?